Hello, everyone, and welcome to today's Free Training Friday. My name is Kaylee White, and I'm a marketing coordinator here at Advocates Next. And today we have with us Scott Heist. He is one of our senior software trainers, and um, he usually does our Free Training Fridays. And today we'll be talking about adding fields to Abacus Law. This will be about a 30-minute webinar with 20 minutes of presentation and then 10 minutes at the end for your question and answer session. So if you have any questions, feel free to input them into the questions portion of the GoToWebinar control panel. We will be reading those and answering them at the end. And don't worry about taking notes or anything like that, or if a colleague of yours missed this session, no need to worry, we're going to send you a recording later on. So without further ado, I'll let Scott take it away. Hey, Scott. All right. Thanks, Kaylee. Appreciate it. Let's go ahead and get started. Uh, everybody should be able to see my screen. If you will do me a favor, though, uh, just verify that you can see my screen and hear me okay by clicking the little hand raise button uh, there in your GoToMeeting window, if you don't mind. Awesome. Thank you all very, very much. Um, so now that we know that, um, another thing just to add to Kaylee's intro there, um, we're going to do a couple, it's just two little short poll questions. We're looking for some feedback um, from all of you. Um, that'll be at the end before we get to the Q&A. So if you guys wouldn't mind sticking around just to kind of, you know, click the yay or nay button there uh, on the very short poll questions, we'd really appreciate that. Um, so we're going to go ahead and get started here. Adding fields to Abacus Law. You know, it's one of the one of the best things about the program, really. I've worked with a lot of different case management tools uh, in my years in this industry, and Abacus Law is by far the most customizable uh, that I have ever seen. So if you look at my screen right now, uh, what you're seeing is a name record, okay, for one of our contacts in our system, and then we also have a matter record, which is obviously our case specific info. So for this example today, I'm using a standard family law contact and a, a standard family law case, which happens to be a divorce case. So these screens are, you know, very handy, but a lot of times people want to customize these screens to either add or remove different fields, okay? A pretty common thing to want to do in your program. Like for instance, if I had my contact card here for Mr. Billy Coleman, and let's just say for some oddball reason, I uh, really wanted to have a field on here for client's shoe size or something like that, some obscure field that obviously wouldn't come with the program. Well, that's a dilemma, right? I need to know how to add that field to my program and then in turn add that field to my screen so that I can capture that information. So it's the same concept if we're doing this for our name screens or for our case screens. And it's very similar uh, when we talk about the intake form, adding it to the intake form as well. But the first step in this process of adding fields is you have to identify whether or not the field that you want to add already exists in your program. Keep in mind, the fields you see on your screens that is, those are not the only fields in the system. That's just what's visible right now. So you need to identify whether or not the field you'd like to add already exists in Abacus. Here's how you do that. Let's go ahead and close out of these records here. I'm back to my main menu. In my top left corner, I click File. I click Setup. And I click Database Structures. This is an administrative function. So if you are not an administrator in the program, you're going to need to talk to whoever it is uh, so that you can get permission to access uh, this area of the system. But your database structures is essentially the menu of all of your fields for your names database or potentially your events and matters database. Notice that drop-down menu in the bottom left corner that says database to edit. So this is a, a quick way to look and see what fields actually exist. You'll notice the field name and then a better description, uh, you know, that's a little bit more identifiable of what that field 
actually entails. So once you go through your list of fields and you identify uh, which fields are here and which fields you may need to add, there is an add button on that screen that you can click and it will allow you to add a brand new field to your database structures. So at this point, I would probably put in, uh, who knows, some sort of identifiable um, you know, code for that field. I also want to make sure I put in the proper field type option. Okay, is this a character field versus a numeric field or a date field? A logical field, by the way, is a checkbox. So it's either on or it's off. It's either yes or it's no. That's a logical field. Think of a checkbox when you see that, okay? And then hyperlinks are going to be links back to other records. So nine times out of ten, the field you're adding is probably either going to be a character field, a numeric field, or a date field. Those are the three most popular, okay? Now, I would probably choose numeric for this. And then you'd want to put in a field length. That is the amount of characters you're going to allow inside of that field. So I'd probably want to do, oh, maybe three or four. And then, of course, put in an identifiable display name so that people know what that field is. And, of course, a description as well. Okay. Once I have that information in there, I can click Done. I can then move on to a different database if I want to edit uh, maybe my list of fields for my matters or for my events. Okay. You can just continue on and do the same process over and over. And then once you're done with that, you need to click the Done button in the bottom right corner. That's going to take you to a Pending Changes window where you need to select the option for Execute Changes and Create New Databases. Okay? One caveat to this. You cannot execute your changes if there are other people in the program. So this is going to be an action you'll probably want to do early in the morning before people come in or at the end of the day when everybody is gone, okay, because it is an administrative function and it does require uh, exclusive control of the system. Now, if there are a bunch of people in the program, no big deal, okay, you can always click the button at the very bottom that says postpone changes and quit, and what that will do is it will save all of your additions that you put in that database structure, but it just doesn't make them accessible yet inside of your screen design. So you would have to then, you know, go back in maybe later on in the day and click that execute changes button. Okay. So I would say here at this you know point in time, I'd say postpone changes and quit or execute changes and create new databases. Okay. So once you click either one of those buttons, it's going to take you back to your main menu, your main window, and you've completed the first step in adding fields to your database structures. But there's still additional steps that you need to make sure you complete because, you know, adding the field to the structure, that's only half the battle. Now we need to actually put these fields on our screens so that we have something to type into, right? So the way we do that, if we're going to be adding these to a name or a matter screen, is we go to File. Setup, User Defined Screens. Under User Defined Screens, you have three options, the Name screen, the Event screen, or the Matter screen. Okay? You obviously need to choose which one you're wanting to edit. I'm going to choose Name, just for training purposes. And inside of this menu is going to be a list of every screen that you have installed in your system. So you would just choose the screen that you're looking to edit, click edit. That's going to open up that screen in the screen designer window. And then it's really just a matter of finding an area within this screen that you would like to place that field. And the way you place the field, the way you add it to the screen, is by just right-clicking in that area, right-click with your mouse, and select add field. When you click add field, that's going to open up your list of available fields in your system. 
That's why it's so important to make sure you add the field to the database structures first before you go into this step, because if you don't add it first, you're not going to see it in this list when you get it. Okay? So make sure you do that first, then come into your designer, and when you right-click and add field, here's your list of available fields. Okay? You can run a search uh, for the field if you need to. Okay? And then once you find that field, and I'll just choose a random one here. Oh, let's see. I'll do source attorney. You would just choose your field, or hey, there's actually a choose size. We'll use that. So we just check that. We click done. We click done. There's our field. Okay. Now we can drag this field and arrange it in a manner that looks, you know, uh, somewhat attractive uh, there. Okay. So it's the same process whether you're doing this for a main screen, an event screen, or a matter screen. Just make sure you right click, you choose add field, and then you choose the appropriate field from the list. Okay. You need to remember though, the database structures, the field lists, in other words, for the names are different than the field list for the matters. So if you add a new field to the names database and then you go and try and put it on the matters screen, it's not going to be there. Okay, you need to add it both places if you want it to show on both. So please just keep that in mind. Now, once you have the field added, you can go ahead and click done. Okay, that will save your changes take you back to the screen menu, and you can click done again. And then when you open up that screen uh, inside of your record, you'll, you'll see that field now. It'll be an editable field um, inside of your uh, database. Okay? If you're feeling a little nervous about editing the screens that are in your program, uh, maybe if you're just new at it, you're afraid you're going to make a mistake, don't worry about that. Okay? You have a clone option inside of this window. You don't need to edit the original screen. Make a clone, okay? Give that clone a new ID and a new name. That way, if you make a mistake and you need to just kind of wipe the slate clean and start over, you, you've only edited the clone, okay? So just keep that in mind. That's a good tip. So let's close out of that. So that's, that's essentially how we're going to add the fields, you know, first to the database structures, then to the screens. We also have the ability to add our fields to our intake forms. Okay, we have our intake forms here, which are obviously very handy, uh, but maybe we want to put a field in here again for shoe size, right? Um, well, um, you know, we can't do that from this actual screen, so we need to go into the intake form manager. The way we do that, is we go to File, Setup, Intake Form Manager, about three quarters of the way down there. That's going to pull up our list of available intake forms. We'll use the one that I looked at previously, New Contact Form. Okay. And again, same rules apply as far as cloning goes. If you're feeling nervous about making the edits, just clone the intake form and edit the clone. Uh, that'll uh, save you uh, some trouble. Um, obviously, I'm just going to click edit here. Um, but once you highlight that intake form and click edit, that is going to open up your web and intake form designer window. The records tab is the tab where we make all of our field changes. Okay, we click that records tab. Here's our name section that we want to add a field to. So all we have to do is click that section where it says names and select edit properties. We click edit properties and that opens up a list of all of the current fields that are on that intake form under the name and it also gives us the ability to add more fields to our list. Okay, so I can click that drop down, choose add field, that pulls up my names database field list. And again, I just go find that shoe size field, wherever it may be, there it is. And I can also notice the checkbox, choose other fields if I want to at one time. But once I have my field chosen, I click done. Here are my properties for this field where I can put in maybe a default value 
or something like that. Or I can put in a little message line here telling people what they should be doing with this field. Okay. And then once I click done, there's my field. It's now in my intake form. I can click done again. That will save it. I click next all the way through. I have a preview window here. I can click. And if you look now, shoe size is on my intake form. So if we're thinking about a good intake, new case intake workflow, we want to make sure that we have the right fields on our intake form. Okay, because whatever we fill in on this intake form, that's what's going to populate the fields inside of our name and our matter records in our program. Okay, so just a quick recap. First thing you have to ask yourself when you want to add a field to the Abacus system is, does the field even exist? We find that out by going into our database structures and taking a look at the names, events, or matters database list. If it doesn't exist, we click add, we add the field. We execute our changes and we create new databases. Once that field has been added to the list, then we can go to file, set up, user-defined screens, and we can add the field visibly to a name, event, or matter screen. Once we've done that, we can go into our intake form manager, and we can also add that field to our intake form. So I hope everybody found that useful. I know it's a lot of information. Please check out the help guide uh, in your program if you need any further details on that. Uh, like I said, we're going to talk about, um, a, a, or I'm going to send you just a couple of polls here, uh, just real quick. They're going to pop up on your screen, and then Kaylee's going to take back over. And uh, we are going to uh, jump into the Q&A. So the first poll that you are going to see actually has to do with our free training Fridays. We're curious to know if you uh, would like to have these on a different day of the week. Is Friday, does Friday work best for you? Or, um, you know, is, it, uh, is Monday better or Tuesday better? So you should see that uh, now. Let me launch that. Okay, the poll is open. Um, so if you could click a little radio button there uh, and just please let us know uh, what your preference is. We try and, you know, we, we really want to try and meet your schedule uh, as best as possible. So uh, just let us know. Great. Thank you all so much for responding. Really appreciate that. We'll wait here just another 30 seconds uh, just to see if anybody else wants to chime in there. Again, uh, you know, the more information we get from everybody, uh, the better it is for you. We can tailor these to your specific needs, and that's really what we want to do. Um, and while you're thinking about that, we'll give it another 15 seconds. The next poll actually has to do with our amazing APX program. I'm sure you have heard about it. Um, there's been a few press releases. Uh, the Abacus Payment Exchange is a direct way uh, to receive, actually, I take that back. It's not Abacus Payment Exchange, what we're talking about today. It is the Abacus Private Cloud. Sorry about that. Even cooler, if you ask me. Um, the Abacus Private Cloud is going to be um, uh, something you've definitely heard about, I think, um, through marketing and, and through some other press releases. Uh, let's see, let's go ahead and launch that poll real quick. And, and really what we're wanting to know is if, if you'd like some more information, on our Abacus Private Cloud. Really what the, um, what the platform is, is is your way of accessing any of your Abacus Next products on the go from anywhere, from mobile, um, from um, you know, when you're traveling, when you're in the office, pretty much any place you have a data uh, or internet connection, you can access the Abacus Private Cloud and have access to your Microsoft Office, and really any um, Abacus Next product. So that's Abacus Law, um, Amicus, Office Tools, QuickBooks uh, uh, items, you know, different things like that. So if you're interested in learning more about that, please let us know. You'll also notice there is a handout um, that you should be able to download as well um, that, has, that uh, you know, has more information on that. And thank you so much for your responses. I'm seeing quite a few people uh, already have the Abacus Private Cloud, so that's nice. Uh, so for those people who acknowledge that they would like more info, 
um, we will be sure to reach out to you and, and let you know. So we'll uh, give it another 20 seconds here on that poll. And while we're doing that, why don't everybody uh, use the question uh, pane there to type in any questions that you have about today's presentation. Kaylee, I will turn it over to you. Uh, please uh, let me know any questions that people have, and uh, I'll do my best to answer. Awesome. Thanks so much, Scott. Um, Eileen just made a note that um, that makes sense to me. I was realizing this as the poll was running. She says, Scott, um, you need to have an answer that says we already have APCs. So I picked the closest one. Um, yes, so if you have a, already have a hosted solution, um, whether it's APC or not, that, that would be your answer choice. <laughs> um, so please feel free to, um, to send us your questions. We do have some time right now. Um, but while we're waiting for your questions, if anybody needs additional training, uh, if you'd like to book Scott for a one-on-one -on -one training, um, there here in our uh, slide we have a phone number and an email that, for you to contact in case you'd like some more help. Uh, we also have more free training Fridays, of course, every Friday. So you can go to abacusnext.com forward slash webinars. You can see all the webinars that we have upcoming. And you can also see our previous webinars with a link to their recordings. So it's a very valuable um, page to go to uh, when you need more resources. Any questions? Will this webinar be sent to us? Asks John. Yes, it will. You will be receiving uh, a recording of this webinar later on today. If not today, definitely next week. Well, thank you so much, Scott, for joining us today. Uh, you always do a great job of explaining uh, your topics. It seems like there aren't that many questions this time. So thank you, everybody, so much for joining us, and we hope you have a wonderful weekend. Thanks, everyone. Have a great weekend. All righty. Bye-bye.